Oh, she's so doing the countdown right now. I just already did. We are live. Okay. So we're live, eh? Okay, right on. Hey, everybody. Um, welcome, welcome to. Uh, uh, I think it's like week eleven of Native Water's Power Hour, and and so um, this is sponsored. Oops, kicking this thing. This year program here is sponsored by. Uh, Indian Collective and NDN, Indian, Indian Collective. So we thank you for your sponsorship and, and supporting us as we bring these programs out there, there to you. And we're the Native Wellness Institute and, and uh, we're a nonprofit organization um, working on bringing healing to Indian country, being trauma informed, historical um, trauma, but historical wisdoms and um, keeping the, the ancestral wisdoms alive. And uh, well, in, in the world today, and so that could be they could be many, many things. So, um, so today, what we're talking about is uh, again, my name is Gene Tagaban, and let me introduce myself. Uh, uh, my name is Gene Tagaban. I'm of the Duck Dane Tom Clan, Raven Freshwater Sockeye Clan from Huna, Alaska. Child of a Wishkata, Eagle Shark Clan from Marquan in Juneau, Alaska. I'm Cherokee, Tlingit, and Filipino. And uh, that's a little bit of who I am. I've been with the Native Waters Institute now for about 20 years. And this is actually our 20 year anniversary this year uh, of. Ooh. Bring that wellness to Indian country and Laya our Ish, good to see you, my brother. And so um, that's a little bit of who we are as an organization and who I am. And, and our our uh, topic today is choose respect about Native men choosing respect to stop the hurt, the harm, the violence and um, abuse against women. Um, and what are what do we need to do and, and talk about wellness and such. Um, but in light of, of what's going on here out there in the world today, we'll see where our conversation goes to. But I brought back uh, some brothers of mine here, and I have high respect for these these brothers out here doing the work in their own part of the world as well, uh, bringing that wellness to men and, and out there to women as, as well, and that respect and and, um, and growing. Not only that, but they're they're taking time to grow in their own ways and um, uh, to learn and lift themselves up as well. And so I'll, I'll just go through right now and just uh, tell us who you are and just a little introduction and maybe what you do in your communities. Um, so, uh, uh, Johan. Noah, Johan, do I you? Lucky food to take you, Muscat, Alaska, I do ask you. Hello, my name is Johan Atkinson. I'm of the Wolf Clan of the, here in Metlakatla, Alaska. I am a youth counselor in my village and this uh i've been involved with this work for about six years now you know and it's uh it's been a it's been a healing and strengthening process you know and i just want to um thank everybody for hosting this this uh this chat here or this live stream you know it's um and i just feel very fortunate and honored to be here right on thank you brother Mike. Hey, good morning, everybody. Um, my name is Mike Duncan. I'm an enrolled member of the Round Valley Indian Tribes. I'm a uh, Maidu, Wailaki, Wintoon on my father's side, and a Western Brown Shoshone on my uh, mother's side. And, uh, you know, I'm also a proud father of five children, and, um, and I'm also the, native, uh, the executive director of uh, Native Dads Network, also Indian. And uh, we've been uh, in, and we've been functioning for the last probably, um, geez, since 2000. Well, officially 2014, but 2012 is when we we came with the vision of uh, creating that program. But working in the community in California, um, mm -hmm. you know, in Northern California here, working with men, um, doing all type of different things as far as fatherhood, um, which that program comes out of NAFA from uh, from Arizona, and, and working with Brother Al Pooley. And then we also been doing work with um, inside different communities doing domestic violence, um, educating um, uh, men empowerment, women empowerment, motivational speaking, um, 
you know, the, the domestic violence trainings, historical trauma trainings. You know? So it's been a lot of different, there are different avenues to get to this place where we're at today of um, adding support to uh, and, and to different communities across uh, California. All right on, brother. Thank you. Thanks for being here. So, Keith uh, Klaish. Konechish, thank you for being here. <clears throat> oh, we just lost him. So, uh, <clears throat> so hopefully uh, he'll get on a little bit uh, later here, and we just uh, um, we'll work that out. Hey, so um, with what's going on here, just uh, just a little bit of um, you know, how are you guys feeling? I mean, with this, we had a heavy weekend, man. We had a heavy. I mean, it's been like a heavy. Let's say it's it's been a heavy week, you know. Even like that, let's let's say since fourteen ninety two, it's been a heavy it's been a heavy uh, uh, heavy time, you know. And uh, for uh, Native Indigenous people, people of color, you know, and you know, it's all coming to this head right now. Just like just things are just like you know, people are just like just exploding here and there. And, and so, um, um, what are your what are your thoughts or what are your feelings on on you know how you guys how are you guys doing? Oh, we have, uh, we have uh, Laubeck. Uh, hey, brother, can you uh, introduce yourself? Good to have you here. <laughs> Internet. Oh, yeah. I had to say, I had to say, I so <laughs> 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 I am Kaguantan, which is an Eagle Wolf clan from the Kona or Kakuna Wu Gross Fort territory um, around Huna area. And that's where my clan and my history comes from. Uh, uh -huh. I am a child of uh, Kiksedi, <clears throat> Raven Frog from the Wrangell territory um, and Hawaiian. I am also. Um, Filipino, and that's on my mother's side. Uh, and then my in-laws, they are the Kanahadi, which is the Raven Starfish from the Kijikan territory. Also, Sutskan Simsian, the Longodinakaninizan, and Haida, and Irish, and English. Um, I am a teacher in the school district here in Juneau, and I've been teaching Kinga language for the last 16 years, and just recently started full-time at all three high schools, hmm. uh, teaching Kinga language and Alaska Native design. Uh, and then I'm also adjunct faculty, so I work part-time at the university here in, in Juneau as well. And you still have your dance group? My wife and I, we, we have a dance group that we've had since April of 2004. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, thank, you. thank you. And again, um, um, thank you guys for being on here, and, you know, and, and just having this, this, this discussion to bring that uh, healing out there to the people or, or hope, you know, and, and um, so during this time again, how are, how are you guys doing during this year? You know, what's going on in the world? How are you feeling? How is it sitting with you even? You know, I mean, there have been times where I've I've been um, on the edge of tears, on the edge of laughter, and on the edge of just anger and rage, you know, and just, just a, a blither of, uh, of all these these emotions, you know? And, and so how are you, how, how, how are you guys doing? Anybody want to chime in first? <clears throat> I'll share, you know, um, I'm sure everybody feels the same way, you know, with the uh, current times and with what's going on in the major cities, you know, and the recent injustices against the people of color. Man, it's been tough, 
you know i'm just gonna be 100 percent honest you know it's it's on top of the covid and with what's going on it's you know it's there's a lot of stress and a lot of hurt going on right now you know and and that's one of the things that we have to uh be willing to acknowledge you know and then being able to take the steps and what we need to do to be able to cope with those um with those emotions and feelings you know and you know the way things are you know like in like in my community or in my state of alaska we just had the highest spike in, in covid um that that we have ever had you know so it's um <clears throat> it's stressful you know and one of the things that i just keep on telling people you know is is it's just to really reflect and dig deep on what can help you strengthen your spirit keep your spirit calm you know and i mean but it's there's a lot going on you know and and i i don't see we all don't see any clear end to it right now you know and i just want to let everybody know you know please take care of yourself please take that time to be able to know what heals and strengthens you you know look out for each other most importantly look out for yourself right on thanks johan anyone else Mike, well doing? yeah i'm doing pretty good you know watching that video um you know happening uh to that gentleman um uh, was very and it was, it was very real i think you know um it's something part of like we know the, something to the days we live in of technology and and you know everybody gets the camera and you know you know it's just because we hear about these things this is not this is not nothing new this is beginning you know not only to african american people to native people for a very long time you know for the beginning of time of america you know as they said 1492 and that you know um you know but seeing it you know it, it triggered a lot of different things it, 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 when i saw it it made me angry uh when i first then i seen it again you know i, I kind of watched it a couple of times because i i was trying to processing everything that was going on the words that were being said um you know uh the, the band's behavior uh, and then the cop and his behavior i just started examining assessing everything and i went through a, a bunch of emotions you know and you know um you know i didn't participate in, in the protest i you know, me and my family had other plans, and so we were with fam other family doing some things. Um, but watching it, you know, what I mean, and understand, I understand the anger that the people feel. You know, I understand what they're going through um, because I'm part of that. You know, I have that anger with inside me because I know the system, the way it's broke, the way that we have things set up, it's broke, and it's not. You know, I was telling my kids, my kids been watching, um, again, uh, social media. And so they're seeing really just more of what the media puts out and what people put out is the, the you know, the, um, the chaos, I guess you'd say. And it, it kind of distracts from what the protest is trying to, you know, um, I guess try to, you know, the message that's put out for the, the protest is, again, justice, right? We want justice. Um, but, you know, then I started, you know, I had it. So we had a long conversation on the way home last night as we were driving home about all the people that didn't didn't get filmed that were uh, were murdered by the hands of uh, the law enforcement or you know through the US government we had those conversations and in the end you know of our our conversation and just within inside my own circle you know my own family was then about praying for everybody you know praying for everything that goes on with inside us because <sighs> This is, you know, we can't be responsible for what they have done to us. You know, this anger I feel wasn't something I just created on my own. You know, knowing what happened to my ancestors and what happened here in California with the gold rush, you know, it wasn't something that I created. This is what we call intergenerational trauma, the intergenerational pain. And so when we, we don't have to, like I said, that, that DNA, we don't have to see things to know what it feels like. And I think that's the fear that we get, you know, the, the tension, the fear that we get when we see those type of things happening. And, um, you know, for me, it's just about, you know, what I was trying to do. And I'm thankful for my own recovery or my, my own healing <laughs> is that I get to, you know, kind of ease my own children, let them know that it's going to be okay, that we're going to be okay. And if we pray, we ask creator for things. That he's going to make sure that we're okay we're going to pray for other people to make sure they're okay as well you know um this like this is ongoing so you know we're gonna we're gonna get through this you know that's one thing indigenous native people have, have proven uh, through the course of time we got we're gonna get through this we're gonna be okay in the end 
You know what I mean? And so, um, my, like I said, same thing. I'm gonna follow John's. Well. I send prayers to everybody out there, you know, at all levels to for their healing, and that we can get through this uh, uh, in a better, get to get a better place, and get the justice that's deserved. Ah, uh, ah, uh, Thank you, brother. Thank you, brother. Kitsa ish. Any? How are you doing? How's how's your feelings? Pissed. Yeah. <laughs> like, there's no other way to express it other than pissed that another unarmed man, I don't want to say his name, George Floyd, to know that he was unnecessarily killed on just by living, being a person of color and it almost feels like to those that don't don't understand um, when we when a black person walks around to see that they have to walk in fear. We walk in fear as well. It's 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 a scary time right now to know how much free time that and how how. How easy these things can happen. Just being a person of color in our nation, and there shouldn't be a fear. One thing that I noticed, and and my wife and I were talking, that how hard it is to be just a person of color anywhere we live or anywhere we walk or anywhere we drive. Just the other summer here in Juneau, we were driving around town and a white officer happened to pull us over. Hmm. We didn't do anything wrong, except we were driving, I guess, a nice car. And that officer, my wife, we, were, we watched him intentionally cut off a vehicle behind us just to follow us. They saw us driving the vehicle. We were going to go one direction. And my wife said, no, pull over there. There's cameras over there. They can, they can record it. And sure enough, just, just as soon as I turned, that officer turned on his lights. We pulled into the, where the store, had, store was put my hands on the steering wheel, did nothing. I pushed the button to open up the window and put my hands back on the steering wheel. And the officer came up to the side of my, my side of the car with his hand on his gun, shaking, asking, why'd you turn, why'd you turn? That's an everyday reality that even though it's not to that level, but it's still it's still a scary thing to know that that individual felt it was okay to walk up to my car as a teacher in this community, as a leader in this community. Why did you turn? Where do you work? What do you do? It's it's a scary thought. So in this nation, um, that's something that I know is it's not something new. Something we've been afraid of for generations. And the only way it's going to change is exactly like what my brothers were saying, is if we change the system. Like many of the people of this nation have been saying, change the system. The justice is not for everybody. George Floyd and many others who have been killed unjustly. They need this. They, they deserve justice as well. What, what we've been doing to
to try and de-stress is trying to take care of ourselves by taking care of the things that we know we need to take care of. And that is our mental health by taking care of things that we know we can control, like what we can do for our family, what we can do in this moment. <clears throat> so sometimes it's tough. Mm. Sometimes we, we have to break down because we have to try and understand why is this still happening? So that that's, I don't know if I can answer that quite clearly other than taking care of our mental health, our physical health. Yeah. So that we can be there for our families. Thank you. Thank you. And that's, you know, and, and as we came on, we're just like, what, what can we do? I mean, even before the riots, and uh, and the protests, the peaceful protests that went on, and, and before uh, um, uh, this this witnessed uh, lynching of George, you know, of Floyd, was out there. You know, um, we were still seeing a spike in suicides, domestic violence, uh, alcohol, drugs, drug ODs. Um, you know driving while intoxicated, violent crimes were still going on, you know, and, and then when this, this came on, now it's like, we're, we're just even, we, I mean, it's off the charts of what's going on out there, you know, and, and uh, each, it's like, like, what can we do for our families? And each one of you talked about, you know, taking care of our, ourselves spiritually, mentally, emotionally, physically. I mean, what, what are these things that we can do as men? <clears throat> as men for our families for our communities you know and for the societies whatever it is but what can we do for ourselves too to keep ourselves um healthy and well because we can get drug into this we can get drug into this and it, it can be overwhelming with the energy and, and the spirit of what it is too you know as native people i was taught that this what this is and it this entity that's out there it is like it is a spirit the spirit that's out there. It's like uh, we have the story of the cannibal giant that's out there too. It's like feeding on on those peoples out there. Um, so what can we do for ourselves? What what to keep ourselves healthy and well and, and strong, and strong. And at the same time, I mean, it's like we've talked about this, Johan, in our groups and Kichla each about about men, you know, showing that true emotion because sometimes you just get so mad. You know, the only thing there is just to, is just to share to shed tears and cry and maybe go down to the water, you know, and, and that's a, our a way healing sweat lodge, you know, whatever it is. So, so what, what, what can we do? What, what, you know, and what's a, who wants to go up? <clears throat> I want to add, um, on, uh, <clears throat> what was said from my brother. Um, it was, uh, you know, we have to be able to uh, educate ourselves, you know, on uh, know our rights. Um, and a couple of weeks ago, uh, Brother Mike was saying that, you know, we have to be able to take care of ourselves. You know, we can't always depend on the system, you know, and that's um, one of the one of the things that I had to do with my sons uh, last night was sit them down. And, you know, my son is 10 and 12, you know, and I kind of and I had to explain to them what was going on in this world and how they can keep themselves safe. You know, and I really like what you said, Gene, about us being able to express our emotions and be real with ourselves because on how we are gonna react to what is going on with this world, how we are gonna react to the injustices that are happening right now, that's what our that's what the next generation is gonna learn. So is the next generation gonna learn on how we are gonna keep ourselves safe, safe on and they need to learn that we know our rights that they need to learn that we know how to keep each other safe you know and and how to look look out for each other you know and being able to get educated on what is going on with ourselves being able to get educated on us on on what rights what human rights we have you know and what human rights are being violated you know it's it's we have to be able to know all that and then take care of ourselves you know that um being able to take care of one another, you know, because we can't always depend 
on outside sources to, to take care of us. You know, we have to do it ourselves. We have to be able to take care of our own communities, you know. Um, and then just just having that talk, you know, as it was, uh, you know, it, it brought up a lot of emotions and thoughts, you know, and then we have to be real with ourselves and to and to our and to the next generation, you know, because it helps us process process it in a healthy way, you know. So, and that's that's something that I've really been trying to do and just trying to process all this, and you know, because every day is something new. Every day, you know, others other cities, you know, are are going through turmoil through the injustice that was caused, you know. So it's just being just being real with ourselves you know is is very important you know being real with each other you know and being able to express our emotions being and 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 not being afraid to be able to shed tears and not being and not being afraid to uh hold back anger you know but there's there's a point and level you know where where you could express your anger. There's a there's a healthy level and there's an unhealthy level. You know, you have to really you have to really approach that and and reflect on yourself, you know, and on how you're gonna portray yourself in this world, you know, because there's a lot of people watching what's going on in this world. And at the same time, a lot of people are watching us on how we handle what's going on in this world. Uh, could I choose? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think one of the things, and I just wanted to um, share real quickly that, you know, um, yesterday or this morning, I guess, because I wasn't really paying attention to my Facebook, but last night, uh, one of our, uh, one of the brothers from this area, uh, Pomo brother, uh, Red Bear, he was at a peaceful demonstration last night, and um, and he was actually on live feed, and um, and so when he uh, was showing, he was like, man, there was kind of a little bit of chaos, but not too much, nothing was being um Nothing was being like uh, not like crazy, like crazy, like we've been seeing in other places. But uh, the police started shooting off, um, you know, tear gas, and then um, a few seconds later, he he just felt like you hear got, got silent, and the phone just dropped. And uh, I guess uh, he got shot in the face, in the mouth, by a rubber bullet. And he, but he, right before that, he was like, "What are you guys shooting at us? This is a peaceful protest. Why are you doing this?" And it just automatically, again, there's someone that I know personally, like I just literally seen him this weekend. And then last night he was at that protest in Santa Rosa, California. And then that happened. And, you know, again, it, it triggers things. You know what I mean? It gets like, again, yeah, you go through it all again. You know, here we are. In a system that's designed for us to, to it's, it's genocide all over again. When we come from a healthy place, when we start to look at things in a healthy place, you know, we know that that's their, that was their motive. We can't dismiss that. We, we just can't say, okay, well, this is a perfect system. We're going to, they're trying to take care of us and make sure that the Native people or the African American people or, or the, uh, the Latin American people are going to be okay. You know, the system is not designed for us to succeed. Let's just keep it real. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's part of genocide, the intergenerational genocide that's happening through our communities. But coming from a healthy place, you know, we, we know it's about the, it's looking at a place of like healing. Like we have to, you know, this is nothing new to us. Like well, there, there's been murders. There's been um, there's been things that happen in our reservations all through our, all our reservations, all our communities. These things have been happening um, from the beginning of time. And now we we're talking about doing some change. We need to educate our youth. We need to educate our we need to educate them how to make system change. We need to participate in a peaceful protest. I mean, this is time that we need to stand up and start speaking truth. You know what I mean? It is what it is. You know what I mean? White supremacy, where we talk about, you know, again, sometimes, you know, we get in a position and we just stay silent because, again, we, there's the fear. There's fear involved. And I and I know that I'm going to speak for myself. I get it's fearful. I get, like, I, cause I don't want nothing to happen to me or to my children. But this, there's a time to stand up and say, okay, this is, this, we got to do something in a healthy way. And it always don't have to always be being on the front lines. There's there's things that we could do in the in the other in the, in the background to make change with inside our within our people, you know. And so this is again to not um, not to just go uh, into a place of uh, dysfunction, but get into a place of saying, okay, what is what is a healthy move for us? 
what can we do for our people that's healthy? What can we do for our people to so make sure they're not walking in fear anymore? You know, because it is and like when the brother was saying, you know, just driving down the road, if a cop pulls you over, you automatically get tensed up. Why do we have that fear? And we need to question that, right? Especially if we're, we're doing, we're not doing anything wrong. Even if we're speeding, we shouldn't feel that, that fear, you know? But why do we feel that? That's, that's part of the trauma, the intergenerational trauma that wasn't created by us, you know? And so, you know, for me, it is about, you know, again, we're talking about healing. This is a, this is a, it's a deep question. You know what I mean? This is very, yeah, yeah. You know I mean, it's, it's loaded, you know, in all type of levels. And I know people are probably way more educated than me could probably reach on, um, you know, on, on, on some point. But I think for us is, again, we have to be honest with each other and be able to have these kind of platforms to talk so we can come to a solution. For that works for everybody, you know. What I mean, not just a certain crowd of people, because you know this is a very scary and fearful time, and our people are still being harmed, as you know, even with protesting right now. So we have to be smart about it, you know. And so I think that's just kind of where I'm coming from when I hear some a question like that, because I just gotta get a lot of emotions come up, you know, a lot of anger comes up, you know. But I know that, um, you know, I want to do what's right, you know, and, and I know that, you know, I want to. If I, somebody asks me a question about it, I want to give them good information. Not give a message of hate or you know it's, or feed their anger and that's where i'm at yeah right um i mean it is this is it's it's, it's it's a huge huge issue when we talk about that men's wellness and or just health in general out here and um and speaking with those uh i mean it is it's there's it's a racial system it's a system this government was based off of uh, white supremacy you know they say that it, it is created too it's like off the iroquois nation um uh, traditions and values that way, but Iroquois Nation too was also a matriarchal uh, society, and they didn't put that in there. It's all this patriarchy that's there, um, you know. And so it's uh, you know, having the conversation like we're doing now, having that conversation, you know, and talking about it openly about it, real about it, like you said, just being real. So uh, uh, Keith, Aish, how you doing, brother? What are your thoughts on uh, just bringing that out there, that wellness? And for men too, what do we need to do? Um, <clears throat> coming together like this year, talking about the hard issues. Um, I know that I'm also paying attention to the comments, and I see that exactly right. We we are also forgetting some of the things that are still continuously happening, like the separation of children from their parents that's a trauma within itself and it, it's still happening at the border and it's still not a, it's it's not a highlight anymore because um rightfully so there's a lot of things that are happening like my brother was saying it's genocide that is happening in our nation but it's been happening since 1492 it's, it hasn't ended it's it's still it's a different version of genocide each time it happens. It's something that's being ripped away from our way of life. And for us to see it or not recognize it or see it as though it doesn't exist, the education system, the justice system, everything that is set was set by uh, you think it goes kikwani. Goes kikwani means the people who've come to our territories. Uh -huh. And that's been set in place so that whoever may challenge them say, no, this is the way it needs to be. Well, we've existed on our lands for over 10,000 years we have flourished in these lands for generations. And the word in our, our language, our languages, just like us, we come from the land. Mm -hmm. Our languages, wherever we are, we're born on these lands. That's how we identify. That's something that can't be taken away from us. And to know that our, our ancestors have survived 
and thrived from generation after generation so that us four can sit here and talk about these things and that everybody who is listening, I want to say this to everybody who's listening. To everybody who is listening, you have it in you, the strength of our grandparents, our ancestors. You have the knowledge of our ancestors. The trauma, we know it exists, but we also know the strength that they had to be able to carry on. An elder, Noah Dawano, had expressed one, one day and helped us with our dance group to name us, our dance group. And one thing that she said was, it's the way he or she carries themselves. The way he or she carries themselves. That's what we need to keep in mind as we, we approach each of these topics or each of these systems is the way we carry ourselves. And the former first lady, they go low, we go high. We can only succeed if we listen to each other. If we, we can only succeed and we can only stand as a nation if we work together. We work together. Just uh -huh. We're all one human being. We all come from different territories of this, this earth, but we're all people of the earth. Our roots reach each other. The breath of life that we share with each other, that's what we need to share, is to succeed as one people. To listen, to say, to stand with courage and not fear is something that we need to come to. So, can I choose some new, some how uh, thank you, folks. Um, for taking the time to make sure that these topics come to the forefront because our nephews, our sons, they need to hear these things. And we, we, when we all say this together and we all work together, we'll come back to a place where where the women in our families, in our lives, in our nation, won't have to walk around in fear. And our men, up and coming men, can hold their heads up with pride. Aww. These are things that we all need to heal from and working together and saying these things that that we know are a hard thing to talk about. And my daughter, I'm going to express this the design, but it's something that she had brought up that helped influence her as an artist. There's, there's a story in Kingit, Kaisawa Katan the sea lion and the ptarmigan. That story talks about the struggles of standing at a place where he was meant to be. And that when he gave up 
he was going up into the mountains. And the little Esawa saw him, Tarmigan. said, what's going on? I can't do this anymore. I can't do this anymore. How can I help you? You help me. Well, here, let me let me help you with this. And that little Esawa was grabbing rocks and putting it into that sea lion's mouth. He said, These, this will help you. And he kept on feeding that sea lion rocks. And when it finally got up onto that top of that rock, he knew that he could do it. But he remembered he couldn't do it with without the help of others around him. That little Esawa gave him the courage to be able to stand with strength, to stand with his head up high. These are what we are doing at this time. The words that we're sharing, our thoughts and our feelings, is like the pebbles put, being placed into our community so that they know that they don't have, ever have to stand alone. <laughs> that we always have their backs. And that's where myself, I'm coming from. That's where I see this coming from. Good night, Cheesh. Ah, uh, good night, Cheesh. Thank you. You know, and, and like you said, it's like in each and every one of us. And, uh, what helps me too is that 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 belief that I'm, I'm surrounded with my ancestors. I'm surrounded by my ancestors because sometimes I don't know what to do. Sometimes I get overwhelmed. I get overwhelmed. And I get stuck in that current. I get stuck in that current. You know, I was taught that um, that when I'm in that river too, it's like sometimes I just I just get stuck and I'm just. I'm fighting. I've been in that river. I'm fighting, going up river, up stream. I'm praying too. It's like, give me that strength. Give me that strength. Help me be strong for my people. Help me be strong. Help me be strong. And I'm just pushing, pushing against that river. And it's cold. And it's cold. It's cold. And then suddenly that river just like, just tell, just like, it's like a whisper. Just whisper. It says, just, we will support you. We love you. We've given you that strength. Now it's time for you to just turn around and let us carry you. Let us carry you in a good way. Let us carry you and hold you. And so it's uh, those uh, like those ancestors. And so oftentimes I need to look at look at those things too during this time and just ask that question, you know, and because we come from this land. All this is what's going on. All this hurt, this pain that's 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 going on on, on as we say Tlinkitani on or on our lands, Turtle Island, the lands of our people. You know, and so it's um I thank you for your words, all of you in your presence. You know, so um, I wanna ask uh, what are you doing for yourself? What are you doing for yourself during this time? You know, just to stay, to stay strong, or healthy, or express. What are you doing for yourself? I, oh, oh, sorry, I don't mean to jump right in, but for myself, I'm taking the time to to enjoy my family. Ah. To listen to my wife, and when we are expressing how we feel and how things are impacting us. Um, what we're also doing to also take care of our, our, our men, that's what we're doing to take care of our mental health, to, to escape um, some things because we might need to do that from time to time is going out and harvesting taking thing, picking things from the land because that's where we draw our energy from. When we harvest, we, we don't go out and harvest 
to release our anger, but to ground ourselves again. When we, my wife and I, we work together to, huh, to, to put our camper together. <laughs> um, I've seen those posts. That camper's starting <laughs> to look good. We, we're just about done, and that's something that, and that's something that we called our Hakaye um, Hiti which means our peace house. And anytime that we need to uh, re recenter or focus as a family, my wife, my daughter and I, we, we go out and we just breathe and enjoy what we have as a family. Um, so harvesting and working together and enjoying my family is, what I've been doing to keep myself grounded. Yeah. Uh. <clears throat> you know, one of the things that uh, that I've been doing, you know, and um, but but first, I want to make some comments on uh, on the brothers here on, on what they stated earlier. You know, it was. Uh, um, you know, we've thrived in this land for tens, tens of thousands of years of, of having that balance, you know, of taking care of one another. You know, there was anything that any, any problem that we were faced with, you know, they were handled and dealt with, you know, so, and, you know, um, and th this system, I know this is kind of off topic, you know, but, you know, Brother Mike's said it perfectly the system was created to oppress us you know and then being able to educate one another educate ourselves sitting down with your with your family and friends and asking yourself what can we do to bring back that balance what can we do to be able to heal ourselves and heal one another you know because it's all it's it's in all of our dna to to be able to live a life of balance deep down to the core, I know we all know what needs to be done, you know, and but living in this, living in a place where the system was created to oppress us, you know, we have to be able to educate ourselves, we have to be able to um, com communicate and help one another because we're all feeling stress, we're all feeling anger, you know, we're all feeling sad. That means that every, everybody that we know, our family and friends are also feeling the same way. And we have to be able to keep that in mind and take care of one another, you know, when we're out, uh, when we're out doing things in our community, you know, know that another person needs those encouraging words, you know, that, that story of the sea line, that's a beautiful story uh -huh. you know, because that it's be, it's, I love that because it teaches about helping one another, being there for each other, you know, and that's that's what we need to be able to do right now, you know, and, you know, and forever, you know, we've always done that, you know, but that balance is not there, you know, there's turmoil, there's chaos, you know, and so deep down, we all know, you know, what needs to be done, you know, and we just have to be able to educate ourselves, you know, we have to be able to educate each other and approach this with the manner of I am I am through with living in this place which oppresses people of color. You know, we have to take those steps and everybody has their own approach and and everybody has their answer, you know, but those have to be brought to light. Those approaches and those answers have to be acted on, you know, because so much is at stake, you know, our our livelihood, you know, um, you know, but um, I just really want to sh express that, you know, because uh, both of the brothers here, you know, they have some really, really great work, and you know, that's the message, you know, and for everybody listening, you know, we have to take care of one another. We have to be able to help each other, and what that help is, it varies from from people to people, you know. Find out what that is, because we're all feeling stressed, you know, we're all angry about what has happened, what is happening right now. You know, we have to take action, you know, and whatever the action may be, you know, it's, 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 it's action, you know, so it's, um, you know, but to, uh, um, go back on that, on the question, you know, what, what are we doing to 
help and take care of ourselves you know it's um again you know it's a lot of self-reflection you know on 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 what comes and heals our spirits you know and and you know it, it just being able to take that time and engage in those activities you know um for myself you know it's with my family you know we go out and harvest our our medicines here in alaska you know i feel very grateful you know to be able to do that and and being able to share with whatever we harvest and being able to share and take care of our community you know it helps it helps with that stress it helps with the anger because everybody that we know is feeling the same thing you know so we have to be able to uh just be there for each other you know continue to take care of one another something that we've always done for the last ten thousand years so i know uh, one thing that you're doing too brother is you're like creating man you're you're getting out there not only you're being uh, uh doing that but you're creating your, your music and your your uh your your uh uh, your hip hop and your your words too, brother. I've I've, I've heard you, and so it's like uh, taking that time. That's uh, for yourself too. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's uh, <clears throat> it's been a really great way to to express, you know, what I'm feeling, you know, um, in a healthy manner, you know, and being able to, uh, you know, because one of the things that we all know as growing up in this world, it's been uh, it's it was us men have have struggled to be able to express our emotions and our feelings and that's just the way this society has has trained a lot of the men to do to not be able to express themselves you know and music has been a really great way for me to process and express my thoughts and emotions and um i just been you know it's been helping me a lot you know helping me get through with what's going on and being able to uh share a positive message with the world you know i i feel extremely grateful Right on. Mike, how you doing? What are you doing for yourself? You know, um, you know, I was just sitting here thinking, listening to the two brothers speak, and uh, I just want to say that, you know, um, you know, all, all of us, you know, what I mean, I, and this is what I just kind of learned, you know, um, and through our communities, you know, that we all have purpose. You know, all of us have purpose, you know, and that all of us weren't, you know, that even from the beginning of time, we all had different roles in our communities. All of us had, you know, there were there were ones that, you know, sat in that circle and, and made decisions for the people. Uh, we come, our, our tribes here are matriarchal societies. And the women, you know, um, we leaned on the women to give us that, you know, that leadership as well, you know, to guide us in that direction that we needed to go. And the men, uh, you know, followed direction, you know, according to what the women were instructing. Also, you know, one of the things is that, you know, not, you know, we all weren't, we all weren't dancers. We all weren't the singers. We all weren't ceremonial people. We were somewhere the, the ones that hunted, the ones that went out and, and did the negotiating to other tribes. I mean, they were all, they've ever had the role with inside their communities. You know, so my, you know, I, I kind of focus on my role. You know, I, I'm not a, I'm not a guy that's all in the politics. I can't be honest. I can't really stand politics, you know. Um, my role, you know, in our community healers in this in this community is about healing, you know, and and the and the way, only way that I know how to teach that is practice that, you know. Um, one of the things again, like what we do, because our, you know, our ceremonies here in May are in May, and that's our big head ceremonies, and you know, and I use I won't, you know, I was debating whether I should even talk about this, but I'll bring it up because <clears throat> I think it's important into this conversation. You know, um, because I know some people are uh, advocates, big advocates about social distancing and things like that. And that's something, a decision that me, I had to make a decision for me and my children. What should we participate? Because there are going to be a gathering of our people and to do our part of healing. And um, and so we had, we ended up going to our, our, it's been a month long for us. And we just went this weekend again. And that's where I was at when all these things were going on. I was in ceremony because that's my role. That's the only thing I know how to contribute to things. You know, I, I need to do what I need to do is by sacrificing for the people, praying for the people, you know, put, taking my shoes off, making sure my feet hit that ground around that fire and make sure that I'm, I'm spending my medicine that way, that that's the only way I know how to do things. 
you know, and 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 whether uh, people and, uh, were part of that ceremony or where they were, you know, part of that uh, protest, you know, that we all have the same thoughts so that we want something, we want change, we want to be safe, we want goodness, we want, we all have this, even though we're doing different things, even if it's in the political realm, we all want the same things, we want the safe things, we have to understand what is our role and what are we, and what are we participating in, and, and it's all the same prayer. And I like how the brother said, you know, um, you know, that we're all one people, you know, creator God, you know, he doesn't see different tribes. He just sees Indian people. And when we look at ourselves, sometimes we, we use that to separate ourselves. Like we're, they're not from where I'm from. They don't, they don't pray. Like they don't sing the way that we sing. They don't wear the same kind of feathers. But that's, that's not how creator sees it. The creator sees us all together as one people that each one of us, whether it's elders or, or men, women, or even the young ones, we're all part of this big thing of, of being Indian, being Native people. And there's power in that. And I believe in that. And so there's times that, you know, I have to show emotions. There's sometimes I have to lean on, you know, I have to really say to myself, you know, I don't even know the answer. And I have to ask. I have to ask women. I sometimes even ask my kids. My kids will have a whole different perspective because they have that that youth, that innocence in, the, in, their, in their mind and in their heart. And sometimes their answers are so simple. And it's like, why, why is it adults, as humans, we complicate things so much, right? You know, and, and so I am, you know, I am about, you know, um, you know, I am, I, you know, I like the different movements uh, that, you know, MMIW, um, you know, uh, you know, the different movements as far as our people going forward. But we know it's about, but it's about also about us, like you said, connecting on different levels and it's having this platform and understanding that what's happening there in Alaska and Washington is happening here in California. And we have to stay connected. We have to know that we're supporting each other and, and that, we, that we're sending our prayers to you too. And I know that you're sending the same prayers here. So when those days are hard, that we're, that we know that we're not alone on this walk, that we, we're doing, we're trying to do this together, maybe in different places. And so to make a long story short, the, I guess the point what I was making is that, you know, that it, it's to me, it's about healing, you know, and that's what I'm, you know, I'm trying to practice what I preach. You know what I mean? Like this is about, I had, I needed to show you, especially my family, my children, how to do that um, by, uh, by participating in, in that prayer, you know, and that's, that's how we, that's how I've been doing it for the last month or even actually the last couple months through this COVID, you know what I mean? And I don't express it, you know, largely, uh, you know, into, you know, I don't brag about that to a lot of people, uh, uh, but I, you know, it's, I think it's important to under, people to understand that, you know, that we are, we are in this together and that, you know, we, I mean, personally, myself, I've been praying for everybody that we, the healing continues, that we don't allow this to break us and let the fear set in, you know, that we, that, you know, the prayer, the people, and I know a lot of other brothers from other places and sisters we all over and holding ceremony as well and praying for us is just as well, you know what I mean? So this is uh, the power power of that prayer. Oh, oh, What I should say, um, thank you, brothers, um, for your words and thank you for your presence. And thank you for your the work that you do out in your communities. Like I said, each one of us we have our, our skills, gifts, and talents. You know, I'm talking to our brothers, our brothers out there too. You have your skills, gifts, and talents. You know, and, and oftentimes you've, you've been on that edge of just wanting to, is, is this the right thing to do? Am I worthy of these things? You know, and just to, but um, yes, you are. Your ancestors are speaking to you. You know, they're, they're whispering to you. We, we, I truly believe that, that we are, we are, we have been dropped into existence. That our ancestors like dreamt us, those old, old, I'm talking about those old, 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 great, 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 Long time ago, we've been dreamt into existence and here we are. And here we are. You know, and to seek that, seek that wellness, that health. Be of service to the people. Be of service. What is that? Maybe it's just going out and picking up trash, you know, and you know, or whatever it is. Maybe it's just in the first thing in the morning. Maybe it's just, just to make your bed. That's, if that's all you could do, then just make your bed in the morning. And start with that. Just mm -hmm. start right there. You know, and, and give those thanks. But, um, you know, my brothers on here, you know, Mike, Johan, and, and Keith, like each, um, thank you. My hands go up to you. I can't, I can't express my gratitude to you, to you enough. And I, I you know those prayers for our people 
first for the safety of our people and the people of all. You know, we're with the Native Wellness Institute. Thank you. We are, as the Native Wellness Institute, we, we hold you up too and our gratitude to you. And, um, uh, you know, and we stand with Black Lives Matter. We take a stand, you know, yeah, cool, and, uh, and we take a stand with our brothers and our sisters, our relatives in that way. So I, I say, Konachish, Konachish. And so as, as we come to an end here, for this moment, because it doesn't stop, this is just a moment, it'll continue on. Um, I'd like to ask Keith uh, Laish uh, to, to close us out here, if that's okay, this moment. Konachish, Takatihan. To my brothers here, thank you for taking the time the words that you shared is like breathing life back into us breathing life into our way of life to our viewers who are watching today without you this is not possible you're all amazing you're all precious and you're all worth fighting for you're all worth standing up and using the tools that our grandparents gave to us, which is our voice, our mind. You are the reasons why we work so hard to do what we do. Thank you all. Brother Mike down in California, Johan over in Metlakatla, uh, Kichla each in 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 Zanta Kehini area, Juno um, area. Thank you. Be well, be safe. Until next time. Until next time. Gonna chish, gonna chish. Ho 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 ho. Yeah, the teacher. Ah, dogs.